In this movie, we'll go over the changes that REST requires us to make to our application routing. In Rails, these are often referred to as RESTful routes. REST still lets us use the basic CRUD actions that we've created in our controller, but the URLs that we use to access them are going to be a little different. Rails gives us a convenient shortcut that we can use in our routes file. If our resource is our subjects, then we would say resources, and then the symbol subjects, and then after that I've got some customizations inside a block from do to end. Resources subjects is the key part. The member portion is because the resources handle seven of our CRUD actions, but for whatever reason, they decided not to include delete in the defaults. It's up to you whether you want to include it or not. Resources is a shortcut that creates all of the standard routes that map to all of our standard CRUD actions. Here's the full list. Notice that in the third column, I have the list of the CRUD actions that you're probably most familiar with. Index, new, create, show, edit, update, delete, and destroy. In the first two columns, I have the URL that would be used to access that action, as well as the HTT verb that goes with that URL. Notice that in the URL, the controller name and the ID are still in the URL, but the action names are mostly gone. That's because the HTTP methods will determine the action. A route is now a combination of the URL and the HTTP method that goes with it. For example, show, update, and destroy all have the same URL. It's the HTTP method, get, patch, or delete, that makes the difference. The same with index and create. The URLs that do still show an action in them, new, edit, and delete, they're really just conveniences for us to have a place to compose our changes in our browser. They aren't strictly necessary when we're editing a resource. If we knew what changes we wanted, we could just submit a post, put, or delete with our changes. Imagine if you weren't using a browser, but instead you had a desktop application that would request subject's ID from the server as a GET request, and then provide you an editor for you to make your changes inside the desktop app. When you were done, you could submit those changes as a PUT request, and you would never have called the edit action, just a GET followed by a PUT. But in a browser, assembling those changes is easiest if we first can present the user with a web form. It may feel a little bit odd at first, but if you look at it for a while, you'll see the logic of the structure. You can type rake routes from the command line to see the actual route mappings in an application that has RESTful routes defined. One final point, it is acceptable to have a mixture of RESTful routes and basic routes in our application. Most developers try to use RESTful routes as much as possible, but most applications have some non-RESTful routes peppered in. For example, in our simple CMS, it would benefit from having all the admin area controllers become RESTful. But the public controller, which doesn't conform to the standard CRUD or our standard routes, could be left exactly as is. Pause the movie and spend some time reviewing these columns. Make sure that you understand how the URL plus the HTTP verb leads to the action, and start to notice the patterns between them, how some URLs are similar or different from other ones. Once we have these routes defined in our application, then we'll need to use those routes throughout our application when generating our URLs and links. And in the next movie, we'll see how Rails provides some helper methods that can help us to generate these.